post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, is an atypical psychological response whereby people who have been exposed to a potentially traumatic event in which they think that their life is being threatened or they witness an event in which somebody else's life is being threatened um, go on to have a constellation of symptoms that persist for more than one month. So what this study helps to shed light on is the fact that mental disorders such as PTSD are not all in one's head as some previously believed. Um, the evidence that we were able to provide through the study shows that an externally experienced traumatic event um, outside of the individual can actually work its way under the skin and get translated into adverse physical and mental consequences. So the main question that we were trying to address with this study is what is the biologic signal that can distinguish people with versus without PTSD? And more specifically, um, what is the biologic embedding of post-traumatic stress disorder? We were taking advantage of recently developed technologies that enables us to address this question um, in a genomic way. So what we did in this study is that we looked at the biologic signal from over 14,000 genes using what's called microarray technology um, among people with and without PTSD. And we had 100 people in this study, 23 of whom met the criteria for PTSD. The main difference that we found that distinguished people with versus without PTSD was that people who had lifetime cases of PTSD seem to have increased activity among immune system related genes. And we were also able to follow up that first hint by looking at the activity of a particular virus called cytomegalovirus to see if the activity was higher or lower in people with versus without PTSD. And indeed, we found that the viral activity was higher. All the samples were obtained from adult residents of Detroit in their own homes in a community-based setting. And this was possible through the assistance of the Detroit Neighborhood Health Study. I think there's two main things that come from this study. The first is that it's a direct demonstration that an externally experienced traumatic event works to get under the skin and gets translated into physiologic and psychological consequences. So the second main thing that comes from this study in my mind is that since what we measured are modifiable chemical targets, they can potentially offer um, sites for future pharmacologic intervention with a lot of additional study. We are very fortunate in that we have a recently awarded challenge grant that supports the DNHS, which will enable us to follow up these initial pilot results. We will be able to analyze samples from people who have current PTSD, those who have once had PTSD but are now free of the disorder, and those who have been exposed to trauma but never developed PTSD to pinpoint the actual signals that distinguish people among these three groups.